Hi everybody, it's Dr. Modi Charter back again for another hoot. What a crazy week, breeding season, lots and lots of drama. Some positive things in uh, barn, uh, Israel Barn Owl Camp number one, there's three nestlings, they're all fledged, they're returning the box. And then we had some negative uh, news this week. We had siblicide nestlings eating other nestlings in Israel Barn Owl Cam number two and also the Israel Ram own cam. Uh, then after that, if that was not enough in Israel, Barnall Kim, number two, an intruder came and predated the nestlings on two different nights. Horrible, horrible thing. Always horrible. Difficult to see the harsh realities of nature. Then we had the little owl of Kim. The uh, little owl, the female, was or sick or injured. I didn't think she was going to make it, but, but luckily she did. So lots of interesting things to get into this week. Let's get into it. We're here in Israel Barn Owl Kim number two. We had five nestlings. One died the first day. Then unfortunately, uh, there were four left. And as you can see here, one of the two older siblings uh, attempted and eventually succeeded to eat one of the nestlings. This one of his siblings, this is called Siblicide. It's common in nature uh, with barn owls. I made a video about that to explain more. But, uh, and then after the next day, they ate the second nestling. So then we were down to only two nestlings. The mother was doing her best. She likes a groom. She preems their nestling. She does it even maybe over. She does it a lot, a lot. Um, so she just had her two nestlings left and they did their best. But unfortunately, the females started hunting also. And by doing so, um, she did it to, in order they can bring enough prey. But by doing so, she would leave the nestlings alone. Once the nestlings are alone, this could be a, a problematic thing. Um, and, um, and here you can see the nestlings are able to swallow prey. They're, they're, they're quite young at this, at this stage still. But they're able to swallow the uh, prey like this, in this instance, a mouse. So unfortunately, they're left... Uh, alone and by doing so there's uh, always a risk of predation uh, quite common as one of the main jobs of the female is to protect them from predation in this case a nest intruder another barn owl probably called a floater because he was not breeding we know he wasn't breeding because he killed the the the, the nestlings and ate them and and then um and over the, the that second day the same thing and it didn't bring the carcass um, to his nestlings. He's a floater, probably a first year barn owl, doesn't have a mate. This is horrible, but it's much more common than we expected or knew in the past. But because of these live cameras, we saw it in Israel in this case, uh, uh, and also in the US, we've had multiple cases of these nest intruders. And what happens is when the nestlings are small, um, the, um, the foreign owl or fledgling can come and kill them. Now, after the second day, uh, the, the, the nest intruder came again. The mother left to go hunt. Uh, he came again and killed the last nestling. This was horrible. The parents were nowhere to be seen. Um, they were hunting at difficult times. Why did the le female leave the nest? It's because there's simply not enough resources, not enough food. Uh, the male was not able to bring enough prey, so she had to go out and help. Very traumatic, very dramatic, very harsh. Here the, the, the male returns and sees his uh, nestling. He brought a prey, a vole. It was too late. The nestling was already dead. The father, uh, which is very, very sad. Uh, but ultimately, um, the barn owl parents, they eat. They ate the carcass. So this is a sad ending for Israel Barn Owl Cam number two. Very sad. But as we've seen in the past, these events are way more common than what we thought in the past. To go to, from a negative to a positive, we're in Israel Barn Owl Cam number one. And we have three large, healthy nestlings that they all fledged this week, which is a huge success. As, actually, last year, there was a nest intruder that tried to kill the last nestling, but he was large enough and was able to defend himself. Here, these three fledglings, they roost inside of the box during the daytime. At nighttime, they go out, uh, fly around. Here, the parents are continue to feed them, so they're building up their wing muscles, practicing a lot, but they're flying. So this is a, a huge, huge success. 
that all three of these nestlings successfully not only fledge, but they return and they roost inside of the box. The parents are doing a tremendous job continuing to feed these three. Uh, they're eating a lot and they're very cute and entertaining to watch uh, during the nighttime. So go, go watch this camera. You'll we'll be able to see at least hopefully for another week or so these guys uh, um, flying around. Quite entertaining watching barn owls fly for the first weeks of their lives. Um, it, it's, 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 a uh, it's not a, uh, inst it's an instinct, but it's, do they, do, they do need to learn it also to fly and you can watch them roosting in the box during the daytime. Hopefully they'll be here for a little bit longer. We're here in Barnell, Israel, Ramon can, uh, the, the female had seven eggs, four nestlings hatched. Um, you can see here the female is doing a great job feeding these tiny nestlings, the smallest bits of prey. This is a huge investment in time and energy because these barn owls do not have the strongest beaks, not like diurnal raptors. So uh, it's not the easiest for things and for them to do to break apart these tiny, tiny bits of, of prey. But by doing so, she's also able to feed all f nestlings equally. Um, maybe not equally, but she's able to feed even the smallest ones because always the larger ones eat more. They beg more and they get more and they're physically stronger. Uh, very cute. These guys are kind of w wandering around the box. It's kind of a pink little alien looking phase they're in. Um, but they're w wobbling and rolling and, and w even walking, crawling around, which is really cute. Look at that there. The mother preening the, one of her nestlings. Wow, it's so precious. Um, and as, as I said, he, uh, this week, the fourth nestling hatched, um, which, which, which was great. And the parents are doing their best to, to feed them. But this is not, this box is about a kilometer away from Israel Barn Owl Cam number two. He's a male bringing food. Uh, so it, it, I think in this region in general, there's not that many rodents this year. So they're going to have a difficult time uh, raising all the nestlings. Um, and, um, and even though that four uh, uh, hatched last night, uh, the oldest one ate number four, just like we had in Israel Barnall came number two, Sibla side. Uh, it's always super sad to, to, to see these things. Uh, but it, it's, it's uh, reality of nature. It's a harsh reality of nature, but it, it's a way of um, d decreasing. Look at, it, look, at this, look at this little guy jump up and down. Wow, so precious, so cute. It's a way of decreasing competition within the nest and having the resources go to the stronger owlets that have a much greater chance of surviving in nature. It's sad, but nature has its way of doing these things um, and um, that, that increasing the chance that, that the nestlings will all f f fledge, that they're giving them the best chance they can to fledge. It's always sad to see. Uh, so this is not a year that we're going to have uh, eight nestlings or nine nestlings or something like that. Uh, we're we're going to have much less. Uh, but it's great that these guys, there's these little pink little owls are wandering around the box already. It's hot out, so they're panting. The, they don't, uh, birds don't sweat, so they pant almost like dogs to keep cool. Uh, so, okay, dogs can sweat too, uh, but birds cannot. So panting is their, one of the main ways of them to keep cool. In general, the nest boxes are cooler than outside temperature. So whatever the temperature says is always uh, a little bit uh, cooler. Uh, maybe I'll even put a link to an article that we've um, added some data um, on that. that You'll be able to see the different nest temperatures and how it varies from outside to inside. So watch this cam, it's a, it's a great one. So Barnall, Florida cam number two, there's still a pair uh, in the box. Um, I'm not sure if they're gonna lay a second clutch or not, but they're acting like they may. Uh, you can see they're courting inside of the box as we see here, which is always cute to have the, be able to watch the barn owls of small talk and excited um, owls when the other one comes in and the female is roosting during the daytime in the box so let's see keep an eye out maybe they'll lay a second clutch soon so we're here at our little owl live cam a little squeaky guinea pig sounding tiny owls we love them they're cute a little bit of drama this week um, uh, and, um, the pair initially the pair was looking okay the male's courting bringing food but there's something weird that she has not laid yet uh, that they're going through all the behaviors of courting. The female was inside the box. A male was feeding her. 
she looked like she was gonna lay and he's actually investing a lot of time and energy and able to provide her food um but unfortunately uh this week one of the nights uh the female started looking uh kind of sick and um kind of wobbly and losing her equilibrium uh, and eventually falling over, couldn't stand up. She was spinning around. It was very difficult to watch. Now this could be caused because some sort of head uh, injury or it could be because some sort of disease. I honestly did not think she was gonna live the next uh, day or two. Um, but luckily uh, she, she came out of it and the next day the male was feeding her and everything looked fine. So keep an eye out for this little owl cam. Hopefully she'll be okay. And maybe we'll be lucky and she'll lay eggs finally. So we're here in our favorite Griffin Vulture live cam with amazing handicapped host parents with their 40 year old nestling that's just growing very well. They obviously adopted this nestling and they think it's his own. And the parents are just doing a tremendous job as they do every year, even despite their handicap being handicapped, uh, feeding and protecting this nestling. Um, it's growing very, very well, very strong now. Um, he's just a beautiful, beautiful bird. And, and, you know, a lot of people think of vultures as eating just carcasses and disgusting, and, but they're totally not. They're probably the, one of the best parents uh, and the dedication they have to this nestling is just always amazing uh, and great and beautiful to watch. So he's really cute starting to stand up and he'll be walking around shortly. Uh, really, really cute. Look, look at how just standing up, flapping his wings like a big vulture. So entering this cam, very entertaining and great to see. You'll get definitely think different about vultures after watching it. So we're in the Israel Common Kestrel camera with the pigeon pier that they're just um, reproducing pigeon uh, clutch after clutch. Here the female laid another two eggs while still having her first, the nestling in the box. So they're continuing to feed this nestling while um, laying another two eggs. So it's always entertaining. These pigeons are reproductive machines. Watch it. It's uh, very interesting. And the same thing in Israel Barnall Cam number four, you have the uh, female with the pigeon up here laying another two eggs and then you have the squab here he's a little bit more developed flapping around so he may fledge soon he'll have to go through the uh, other pigeon pairs in the tunnel because as we know there's two other pigeon pairs that want to breed in this box so watch this cam very interesting so i really hope you like this video it was a little bit of a diff more difficult one uh, this week was not the easiest but this is nature uh, who are we to judge it uh, these harsh realities are way more common than we thought in the past as we see when we get to learn from the live streams and a lot of it is because of you, your participation in the timestamps, uh, writing in the chats, timestamps and that information we collected is really, really helpful and useful. So thank you so, so much for all your help. For the moderators, you do a great job. Uh, amazing. Uh, if you like this content, if you can uh, donate, we always need your help. We don't make money, so I put a link in the description. So again, uh, if you don't, um, please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Keep on watching. Hoochie later.